Welcome to the current model of our podcast, which is totally free every Monday and Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts, including right here. It would be a great bit if you subscribe or follow. We do a minimum of four total episodes each week, and two of them can be heard behind a paywall at patreon.com slash the dumb zone. So Monday and Thursday, free everywhere. Tuesday and Friday will be behind a paywall at patreon.com slash the dumb zone. Now, here's today's program. The dumb zone. The dumb zone. Didn't they once have to like shoot a horse right on the track? Like, oh yeah, yeah, the and, horse yeah. broke his ankle or something, and they had to put him down. You know, again, I don't know anything about horse racing, but it seems to me like that's pretty fucking harsh. Like, dude, you can't. I mean, in this day and age, we can't fix a horse's ankle. All right, 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 all right,
Uh, I may have done that. Maybe I, I don't know. Do they have the thing where you can dig around for artifacts and the of sand course. thing? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we've been there. Yeah, and when I lived there, you're just looking for when you got little kids. You're just anything looking yes. to yeah. kill time. It yeah. might be just going to the mall. <laughs> and my father-in-law was with us, so I was like, okay, you know, let's just figure something out. And uh, I used to live across the street, but I never knew it was there because we moved when Nora was like eight months old or something. Um, but it's a really great time kill and it was actually free because the stock show was going on and are is it the same bit of are you learning oh my god along with your four-year-old a little precipitation talk huh i definitely knew that's how oceans work (laughs) (laughs) no but it was it's really cool they have a bunch of like uh you know how does all the water not just fly off the dinosaurs are always like a, a a key component to these things Mm-hmm. You know, so they've got like bones. Um, they had like a really cool deal where you could uh, like take out a piece of paper that had, you know, like the, it was basically like a coloring thing of a of five different dinosaurs. You could color it, you could put it on this thing, you could press scan and it would show up on the screen the way that you drew it. Like a flat screen, you know, like movie screen basically. So if you drew it like red and green, you would press scan, and then there would be like a red and green stegosaurus up there. It was really cool. Is that confusing? Yeah, I'm just not... That doesn't seem that cool. What do you think? Well, it's really more that like you could have the kid color something. And then they'll on see it up paper, on the... And then you press yeah. a button, you put it You put it down, you press a button, and it shows up on the screen like walking. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. It's moving. Oh, yeah. All right. No, I just thought... Yeah, or right. like a pterodactyl so flying. I've seen up. a projector before. Yeah, I didn't. I it's, didn't. Not, it's not like. <laughs> That's what I was no, trying no, to. No, 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 for real. Like, you could draw like a blue pterodactyl. Okay. Put the thing on a computer screen. All right. Press a button, and now then there's I'm a excited. blue pterodactyl now like I'm, flying Now by. I'm going to go there even without kids. <laughs> um, But there was a bunch of there was a bunch of other cool stuff there. It was a really it was a really cool place. And then. What if I just liked kids, and I said I wanted to be a babysitter? Would people hire me as their babysitter? Probably not, dude. And then you're on your way out to dinner. It's like, all right, Dan. Hey, all right. I mean, you know, like, yeah, I was a good father. I kind of liked doing it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind having new kids with a new hot Super wife. Super prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're. if you leave your kid with my 16-year-old daughter, you're like, ah, what's, what if something goes awry? Yeah, I mean. If something goes awry with me, this guy's got it. Do NFL, He's team, been through it do all. NFL teams hire uh, high school kids or former players? Right. <laughs> this guy's done it all. He's he's been through. He's he's seen it. Right. He's not going to be a, a. Yeah. How how come I can't get that? You know, societally, you're probably right. Job. It's just the whole pedophilia angle. All right. Go ahead. I just got to thinking. I would like to go to see that thing at the museum. It's but it'd pretty be cool. Weird for me to go there without kids. Yeah, you can't. Maybe I could just. You definitely can't go alone. Have a friend's kid go with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lend you a kid. Um, but then uh, Saturday night, I went to go see a, a comedian, Stavros Halkius. He is formerly of Cumtown. And uh, he's like the biggest Ravens fan in the world. Mm. <laughs> he actually, you bet you didn't see him after. He puts out videos where uh, he does like a Baltimore accent. Like he's like a fat Greek guy. And he puts out videos where he does like a Baltimore accent called Ronnie Ravens. And uh, the Ravens have actually embraced this. Okay. Like they'll post him on their team account. He canceled back in like October. And he's doing the show Saturday night. I went with TC. He's wearing a Lamar jersey. And he's like, listen, if I wouldn't have canceled in October, I would not be here right now. Mm-hmm. But then somebody sent me a, a photo at about 6 a.m. on Saturday morning. He did a 7 and a 10 and red-eyed back, and he was at the game. Jeez. Nice. Yeah. And the Ravens posted a, a video of him. He spent about the first 15 minutes. Th- this is the, the, the fun thing about Dallas. He spent about the first 15 minutes just making fun of the Cowboys, and nobody was mad. <laughs> like, if you do that in, like, Philadelphia, people were like, Fuck you. <laughs> I love this town. 
In Dallas, everyone's just like, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Jerry sucks. The Cowboys suck. We get it. Yeah. But it was great. It was a, it was a great time. And it was cool, too, because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times um, when you go see a, a comedian who's touring, they're kind of just doing a special that you've already seen with, like, maybe a 30% mix of new stuff. This was, like, the special's a year old. I'm going to try everything tonight new. Which was a little bit weird because he had, like, notes. Hmm. Like, there were times where he would, like, look at, like, the bar stool and be like, I'm going to try to figure out which one of these is, a, like, an ender. And I've never seen that before. Like, when I saw Shane, he basically did the Shane Netflix, or, uh, YouTube show. Mm-hmm. So he was just like, all this is entirely new. A lot of it's going to suck, and you'll see it in 18 months. Well, how was it? It was amazing because he's great. Yeah, I once saw Pauly Shore in Dayton (laughs) just doing a show off of notes, the whole show, and I thought it was (laughs) – it didn't seem cool like that because it wasn't that The whole show wasn't notes. And it was – But it was like I thought it was ultimate disrespect. Yeah. It kind of like all these people paid money. I paid money. Well, maybe I didn't pay money because the radio station. Yeah, the because we had him on, you know, on the show. Um, we used to get comedians on. Comedians too. Well, he's only fifty-five. Paulie Shore. Yeah, I don't know why I thought he would be older. He does I'm, seem I'm, older. Uh, I'm surprised he's alive. Yeah. I believe I saw he was going to be in a Richard Simmons biopic. Oh, yeah. I would watch that. I think I heard about that. Do you know about I, his mom? I feel like visually that's who he looks yeah, like. Yeah, he's fought on. Uh, No. Mitzi? I think she passed in the last five years. Yeah. From- Owner of the uh, comedy store. World famous com- uh, comedy venue. I've read a really Apparently good book on that. Apparently not that famous. No? Yeah, I've read a real good book on that. The Days of the Comedy Store. That's... I'm fascinated by stand-up. I wonder if... It's literally the only thing I consume. <clears throat> yeah, I watched a, a bit this weekend. I saw the, the Jacqueline lady that you told me about. Yeah, cool. And uh, I it, watched it the, is cool. the newest Chappelle. I like that one, too. Which is a couple weeks old, but it was pretty good, yeah. Yeah. It's just way easier for me to consume than... Like, like I'm having a hard time getting through Fargo. And, like, I don't dislike it. But I like, watch like an episode, and then I watch another one like a week and a half later. See, stand-up's and, good because I can stop after fifteen or twenty minutes if you feel like it. You know about our rule. What's that? I think I've extended it to ten, but my wife has previously. It was the five-minute rule. If you're not grabbed by five minutes, if you can't you, laugh in five minutes, then go. Because I just mean I like the Jacqueline lady. I can't remember her name, but Jacqueline Novak. But. Uh, it's really long. It is so and long. She's it's an hour very, and 30 minutes. It's she's very, very intense. intense, so I yeah. can only take like about 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. Like, I need a break. I get that. Yeah. But our deal is like, <clears throat> your best stuff is going to be at the beginning and the end. And so if you cannot get people to laugh like in the first 10 minutes, you're probably not going to be interested in minute 48. I'd like to try it again. Try stand up, so yeah. would I. And At this the only reason age. I don't is that um, everyone would make fun of me because it would suck. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think it would. But I've been keeping stand up notes for a couple years. Same. And I use most of it here. That's why this show is so electric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, obviously we use a lot, of, and some stuff we say here I'll jot down. Like, oh, that yeah. might be a. A good bit, but it stand up seems so difficult to me. Just the whole being able to do it again as if you just are doing it for the first time. Yeah, and I mean if you just want to do it like recreationally, like you wouldn't really have to do that. But it know? seems to be good, you have to really do it a lot. For sure. And Speaking so, of Akash, as but, we were before the show, like he's been on me about it for years. And I'm sure he has been with you. I know he's he was trying to get Donovan to do it. 
No, I don't think he thinks I'm funny. <laughs> he's he's never said, "Hey, you should do it." But I I like now I actually do probably have more time that I could do it. I don't know. One um, of my writing gigs was uh heavily stand-up focused. Like I would just go to basically open mic nights. This is how I met Paul Varghese. You met him before, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So I would just go to like I think it was like a a club attached to a hotel and I would go there every week. For like four months. I did talk to Akash the other day. He said we should be doing like a, as the future unfolds, we should do a show at a comedy club every month. Like once a month. Future Blake? Just do a night. Uh, no, do the podcast. He said that's a good bit. Yeah, I... Uh... But would anybody go? No. That's the thing. No. I've always thought that we should do a segment of because the when I got in close with hyenas downtown because they got us a couple of people on the show. You know, he was always sending me names of people you know that were coming through town that I hadn't heard of. But a, a part of Dan's thing is just like have them a part of the show, and if they're funny, then we establish a relationship, and if they're not, then we just let them go, and they, we could just have this comedian be a part of our show every once in a while. So even if we don't really know who they are, yeah, it's let's just stay. Hey, Hey, yeah, that's to- that's probably like, and maybe that uh, fits into one of the themes on today's show is I look at our run sheet. It's Monday. Do you want me to read you real quick the the a brief uh, anecdote from my stand-up notes? Sure, but let me just say, that. so it's Monday, we, and we're going to be talking about, like one of the things on my run sheet is we're going to do a live spot about live spots. <laughs> yes, we are. We're going to do our first live spot today, but it's going to be about live spots because we're allowed to take... Advertising now. Woo! And maybe that's like a future advertising or trade deal or something, you know, with a uh, comedy club. Maybe it's a a whole all-encompassing, you know, we'll we'll have your guy on every week, even if we don't know who they are. Because a lot of, I would get texts and emails from every one week. of my comedy yeah. contacts. And it, unless they were well-known, I didn't want them on our show. Yeah. But like Blake says, now also just hang out. Okay. Maybe now's the time for Bruce Bruce. Now's the time for, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Your comedy notes. I was Ladies and gentlemen, about, new segment. I was thinking about this. Uh, Jake's phone. Because I'm not really allowed to do anything. <laughs> That's not the joke. Oh. <laughs> sorry, He's, I thought we were... What a jerk. I thought we were the crowd. What a jerk. <laughs> Just didn't know when the punchline was. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, oh come, come on. on. You can't let this guy beat you down. <laughs> like, I don't know. Dan doesn't deal with this, but I definitely uh, do. And I imagine Blake, to a certain extent, does, although Blake has a lot more scene control than I do. I'm notably the lack of scene control guy. <laughs> and, like, if I tell my wife I want to do something... She does like the, this is not how I would do it on stage. She does like the, well, where are you going to be? When are you getting home? What time are you leaving? Who's going to be there? Yeah, my wife is very going? inquisitive that way too. Where are you going? Where have you been? What would you do? Like, I, and if there? she's not here. Are you, I don't ask any questions. Not a, no. I've, it's I'm, not a single inquiry. I'm, I'm just happy she's not here. And when she gets back. You're like, oh, you're home. Have you noticed this too? When she's like, hey, how was your day? She doesn't want to know about your day. No. She wants to tell you about her day. It's a, a call and response. Because I'll be like, eh, I don't know. Fine. It's, I don't know what we did. I don't remember what we, you know. And then she's like, well. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you about. So the funny part to me was thinking about like uh, in keeping with the theme of the show, like that the guys who did 9-11 like had to explain less than I do. Like they didn't even have to train to land. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to they nobody was like, Where are you gonna go? Like they didn't even have to provide an answer. I have to be like, all right, seven to eleven, this restaurant, this bar, this is who's here. I'll get the kids up in the morning. And the the homeboys from nine eleven are just like just You should just you Rock should just out. get that Life 360 <laughs> yeah. app that you've been yeah. against getting. So it's not a great joke, but I do no, think, I like, I, I do think about 9-11 a lot. 
see, that's the thing, and that's the thing about being a stand-up comedian. You can think a lot of funny things or little threads, but like, how do you then put it together yeah. to be in a logical form to actually get somebody to I laugh? I mean, I had something then, written out, but then Blake kind of like kicked my dick in yeah. at the start of the setup. So, Well, you're going to have to deal with yeah, yeah, Blake's yeah, in, the, true. in the audience. That's true. He's just helping. That's true. I thought you had a 9-11 note over the weekend. Oh, you know what? I do. Did I send you guys that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So at that children's uh, museum <laughs> where you can see a brachiosaurus and you can see how wind works and you can color, there is a 9-11 memorial with a huge piece <laughs> of the tower and an interactive scene over to the side of it oh. where you can... Jump out of the... No, not... Oh, you can do the falling man. No, but you can press buttons that say, like, uh, attack, response. The attack actually shows the planes hitting the towers. And then you can hit response, and you see, like, you know, first responders heading to the ground zero. Um, It's insane. It's right when you walk in, too. And, like, um, nothing go else. Go comfort the widow right, of a deceased comfort, uh, yeah, exactly. friend. Yeah. Uh, now marry In, that widow. There's a button that says insurance. <laughs> 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 so, Donate no, to a cause yeah, that yeah. turned out to be a scam. Yeah. <laughs> Start a war. There's a button for that. <laughs> None of the, the rest of the museum, like, has that vibe at all. Like there's no other there's not like a civil war thing there's not like a world war two thing yeah that's just that's <laughs> it's it's all just like science but when you walk in there's a huge piece just of like, the tower because we can I guess as hey, I think that's what we're learning is that the the people who are selling that stuff contacted every museum in the in the nation yeah just I got a part of viewer mail today I um or tomorrow or sometime but somebody had told us. Uh, Joe, I think his name is Joe Breslin. He went to a 9/11 memorial in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. There's a place called that, and it's it's uh, right in front of a cheesecake factory. <laughs> Baker. There's a Morton Steakhouse. Uh, it's basically a a plaza. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Appreciate that. We we appreciate hearing about all the. <laughs> this all started with the nine eleven memorial in Grapevine, and now we're just learning about. I will also tell hundreds you of them that uh, as I I mentioned before, my father in law was here this weekend, and we were driving back from somewhere, and there's a sign actually, on Northwest Highway that says nine eleven memorial this way, and he was kind of like, "What's that about?" I was like, oh, you want to see it? Oh. And, and you can get some Tex-Mex while you're... And we drove by it, and he was like, that's it? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, that's what everyone says. <laughs> what was your weekend? Uh, anything exciting? No. Not really. Okay. Had exciting games in Argyle Friday night, and then uh, doing some work for the East-West Shrine game in Frisco this week. Nice. I'm getting a lot of emails. First stars about are that. made. About the Shrine game? Yeah. I must be on a mailing somehow. List. Yeah. Bracket Dan at Hotmail dot com got on the mailing list for <laughs> okay. for the East West Shrine game. I got uh one more thing. I got into uh an altercation yesterday. Oh. Of course you did. Yeah. At flag football? Mm hmm. I wanted Blake to come out so bad. I can't. Pussy. What do you mean? Pussy. Me? He's like, I haven't, run, I haven't run. Yeah, I'm not going to get out there and run 110% after I having needed run a body. six months. I needed a body. Oh. Yeah, I can't do that. We were down. Down like four or five guys. And I was like, dude, please come out. He's like, I can't. <laughs> That's surprising. I thought you are the kind of guy that can just kind of... Yeah, like a cheetah. Show I, up and mash, yeah. If I can go at my own pace, but flag football is a different animal. All I needed you to do was block. So if you needed yeah. softball, you'd, you'd have been there? Yeah, because, I mean, I can go at my own pace. Basketball, I can jog. Not flag football. I, that's It's different. Did you get enough? Well, obviously you did. I found a buddy, yeah. And so uh, we were playing a team that was sort of an amalgamation of God Squad 
and one other team. So we didn't pray before, but stay <laughs> tuned. Um, I would say midway through the game, we had one sub. So I was playing offense. My buddy that I brought was playing defense. We were the old guys. And uh, there was just a, an atrocious call. Like the spot was 10 yards off because both of the refs were watching the AFC championship game on their phone. The game was at two, and I'm like, okay, A riveting I, affair. I get it, yeah. which we'll get to later. But I'm like, you're paid to be out here. You have to at least have your eyes up. <laughs> and they spotted the ball about eight to nine yards off. And I went on the field and uh, earmuffs kids. But I was like, that fucking spot is fucking wrong. I was like, and you fucking know that. And uh, <clears throat> now, did you feel like that's the best way to get it changed? <laughs> well, the, here's the weird thing about it: the flag was on the ground. And I'm like, that's where the ball goes. Mm-hmm. Like if he, if his flag, it's still back there. It's on the ground. Just saying, just going no, in no. with such a controversial. It was bad. It was attitude. Was it your guy again? Uh, it was one of guys okay that's why he was already set off and uh you know they didn't change it or whatever and the guy uh one of the guys on their team was like you know you can't curse like that in front of my kid okay and i look over and there is one kid there who appears to be about six months old my kid was there and i was like my (laughs) i was like earmuffs again a six month old kid i was like my fucking kid is here i don't care they don't know. So there's a six-month-old over there on their sideline. And, uh, you know, whatever. It chills out. Actually, after the possession, I went up to the guy and I was like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, that was you know that was wrong. But Wait, I lost, I lost to the ref, point. not to the guy who says don't swear in front of my kid. To the guy. The guy. Yeah. Don't swear. He was really him. fired up about it. Okay. And I went up to him and I was like, I'm sorry. I lost my cool. I was like, you know. Okay. My bad. That's typically how it goes with me, right? All right. Yeah. Like I lose yeah. my cool and then immediately I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. regret. Sure, honey. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know so, not to talk to me when I'm drinking. Exactly. <laughs> and he was like, nah, it's all good. And whatever. Whatever. Well, when we're leaving, the guy left alone. So I'm like, you don't have a kid here. You pointed that out to him? No, but I mean, oh. our group chat did. Like, we okay. all walked to the parking lot at the same time together. And uh, he just mm-hmm. gets in the car by himself, and immediately somebody texted me, and they were like, I don't think that guy had a kid there. <laughs> <laughs> what a lame move. To feign having a child. <laughs> to, to be upset. Yeah. Anyways, we won. Were you destroying them, too? No. Okay, so that's why you're actually worried about this spot of the ball. Because otherwise, if you're winning by 20... No, this team is... Oh, and also, uh, this is the part I was going to fo- uh, wrap up with. Some of It's some of the God Squad guys, like I said. We did the prayer after. And we got in a circle. And the quarterback for their team asked us to take a knee. So we took a knee, and I was like, oh, Kaepernick. They didn't find that funny. (laughs) Uh, So we take a knee, and we do a prayer. And uh, the quarterback was like, you know, he did his normal bit. And the end of his bit is always. Deer. Eight (laughs) eight pound. (laughs) Baby Jesus. The end of his bit is always, uh, and thank you so much, Lord, for uh, dying on the cross for our sins. Some of us need us uh, need it because of our language. Amen. And I go, oh, that was no. a shot. Some of us laughed. Some of us didn't. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's my Sunday. It was fun. Well, my weekend, I never really bring you guys anything. But I went to the Mavs game Saturday night. Hell yeah. The Saroy Suite? The Saroy Suite. Cash Soroy, who does video work for the Mavs, I think part of his arrangement is he gets one sweet night a year. And he invites his very, 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 very best friends in the world mm-hmm. and me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. 
It was a good time. Now, we haven't driven down there in quite some time. Yeah. And um, I should have gotten a scouting report on construction. the massive amount of construction. <laughs> yeah. And if you drive that, if you expect just to turn left uh, at the Oak no. Lawn, it's, it's just horrible. I would not have. I would have gone uh, Harry Hines had I known. Yeah, or even like Continental. What was in store for me? Yeah, it yeah. was just uh, just terrible. Um, but yeah, got the. Uh, was very concerned that Luca wouldn't play because it was the day after, the seventy three point game, and I thought, well, back to back. Certainly, Luca won't play. This would be an easy one to sit out, uh, but he did. Because Luca cares about each and every one of us that are going to the game. I always wonder, too, do they determine his um, load management based on if they have a road game and a home game, does that play into it at all? Like, uh, for sure. I want to make sure I get the home game. Yeah, for sure. Okay. It does. Because you would think almost they would rather play the road game because it's very few times you get to see Luca. But you get to see him at home all the time. But you know your fans want to see him. So yeah, and you got to anyway, factor was, in like the broadcast. You know, like neither one of those were national games, I don't think. But that's part of it as well. Yeah, there's rules about that now, right? Yeah, you could be fined. When did you leave? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably about with six minutes left in the game, we started to head to the exits, and then it was a wait for the elevator, and then it was a. You need an elevator at the suites, Blake. Yeah. And then I'm the uh, the wife um, kind of handed it to me when we got to the car about my brisk trip to the car because we had to run across the street, Did your parking run up five work? flights of stairs. We parked it. We had Lexus parking, so oh, okay. it was across the street. I don't know if you tried your card. I was going to. Mine doesn't but, work. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mine does. I actually was going to. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. I, but I couldn't get around that part because of right, all the right. construction, construction, too. So yeah. I just like, okay, let's just go right in here. And, uh, yes, I basically ran to the car, and she wasn't keeping up. And I'm running up. You know, I'm. Ch- why do I go to the gym? That's for nights like that. For <laughs> nights I need to run up five flights of stairs in a parking your, garage. Your game day. Beat traffic. Yeah. And then beating traffic. And then, yeah. It was, uh, but it was a lot of fun, predictably, right? Going to a Mavs game in a suite, Mavs games in general. Do you have some chips? Or, uh, I had some uh, popcorn, had some food. Okay. Maybe a little salad. Oh, my God. And maybe. This guy comes to your suite and has a salad. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little brew, bro. <laughs> <laughs> little knock, suds. Knocking a couple suds back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and. I know your wife did. <laughs> I think I have. Oh man, <laughs> she was getting sloppy. So, whoa! I, uh, I think I have secured the Soroy twins as guests for our Super Bowl stream. Let's whoa, go both, both. Wow! Generally, Cash will have a Super Bowl party, but they're going out of town and getting back the day before, and so they will they be can't here. Prepare. They will be here on that couch next to Blake. And we've got some big ideas for the Super Bowl stream. We really do. That's going to be fun. <clears throat> and we know who's going to be playing now. So should we lead into NFL talk? Was that a like segue? <laughs> yeah, I think you already kind of, yeah. <laughs> or is that is that possibly, because we do want to do some Luca talk today. And we're thinking that's kind of what this show basically is, if you're just uh, finding out about us. We talk about... Football and Luca. We can do Luca first if you want. Oh. Um, again, I referenced. Uh, change, change the music. Change the music. We don't. Do we have another one? <laughs> <laughs> we referenced, uh, or I referenced, having uh, my wife's dad in town. It's really cool. It's almost like uh, I think about it like if you have a friend who's never seen The Wire or has never seen The Sopranos and they start watching it. You're like, man, I wish I could be where you are right now. Like a virgin experience of one of these shows. 
Watching Luca with my father-in-law, who doesn't watch a lot of basketball, he was just like, what is this guy <laughs> on Friday night, you know? He's like, how big is he? You know, like he's gone, he goes to a few Pelican games maybe every other year or something. But he was just like, well, where is he from? Like, what is he doing? Like, does he shoot like this all the time? And I'm like, I don't, you know, he's in my opinion, the best basketball player in the world. He's pretty awesome. And tonight, he's going to score 73 and be up three with two minutes left. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is it? But it's a weird experience because he's such a different player. Like, if you watch him with somebody who doesn't really watch basketball, they're like, what is he doing? You know, it's not like watching – you know, I would say Giannis is almost like a conventional basketball player. Embiid is like, oh, I've seen that, you know. But Luca, it, I just don't know that there's ever been anybody like him. So when you watch him with like a, a non basketball fan, they're very confused as to how he's pulling off what he's pulling off. Because it seems to be something different every time down the floor. Yeah, exactly. You know, Giannis is just okay. He's bigger than everyone else. He goes down underneath. Same with all the post guys you're used to. But. Him hitting a three, then a mid range, and getting to the bucket, and then assist. It's just. And he's slow. So you're like, <laughs> how is this working? So I noticed in the Dropbox something Friday, but then we forgot. I don't know if we forgot to play it or if we were just. Uh, Rolling. Just kicking such ass. Yeah. But that. Um, I just saw a short clip of it. Did you guys want to play the TNT guys? I put it in there. No, not really. Okay. Um, the one thing that I was going to play out of it is just – it was uh, stemming from our – because go back to last Friday, we were still talking about Luca versus Tim McMahon. Yeah. And that was the big story that week. And then he's on TNT with Shaq and, and Kenny and them, and, you know, you expect, oh, they're just going to have fun. And the first question they ask him is, so your behavior with the refs. Right. They're and, grilling him about that. Yeah, and it's just like, at one point, is this embarrassing? You're on TNT. You just got All-Star game. First question, how are you going to calm down? Like, I don't know. At, at what point does Luca say, like, okay, maybe I should? Well, well I mean, I think the moment has passed. <sighs> he should have a long time ago. Why not? Yeah, I just... But Does this that's mean- probably a little more Nudge. weight yeah. when you go in that studio and, yeah, you expect them just to be kissing your ass. But it's uh, it's interesting, though, is that – like because it seemed like Luca under fire and then he pulls out a 73-point game. Like is there a – Correlation at all? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the point I was making last week is that – I just don't know how you get him to chill out while not affecting the way that he plays the game. Because he plays angry. Yeah. And did that, like without Tim McMahon and Shaq, does he score 73 that night? Don't know. And it's the Hawks also. It's the Hawks and they, (laughs) yeah, they're the ones that that traded him. I like, uh, so Twitter reaction that day. I do like the popular retweet. Please tell me this has something to do with Kobe. I'll get there. <laughs> okay. Woj. The retweet of Woj, June 21st, 2018. Atlanta and Dallas agreed to a deal. They'll trade numbers three and five picks, sending Luka to Dallas and Trey Young to Atlanta. Dallas sends Atlanta a future first, which is often retweeted when the Mavs play the Hawks, and it is kind of funny. If you kind of remember, not a lot of people, but some people were, did Atlanta win that trade? Especially after they got to the West, uh, they got to the conference final, Eastern Conference Finals. Was it Cam? Cam Reddish? Yeah. The The pick? Yeah. 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 Uh, But no, if you traded Luka, you didn't win the trade. (laughs) No. No, unless you got... Michael Jokic. Jordan. You did not. <laughs> yeah, or Jokic. Yeah, Maybe sure. you would take Jokic over Luka. Um, no. Well, let me uh, – if if you want me just to roll through some uh, Twitter reactions. Uh, Magic Johnson. <laughs> Always an astute sports observer. 
in nothing. It's just generic. Oh, congrats to Luca. <laughs> like he's just. It's just funny how he. One of the reasons he left the Lakers, he said, was because he tweet. can now tweet about anyone. Because he had to just tweet about Lakers, you know, or else he could be charged with tampering. And now he can just say, "Luca, wow." <laughs> Pound for pound, right there with I OJ. My, I hit the table in the dog things. Pound for pound, right there with OJ for the best Twitter account out there. <laughs> Dif- different angles, but sure. yeah. yeah. Um, one of the popular threads from Mavs fans, and I just, this tires me out. It's the same thing of I always have to, uh, kind of the same thing we'll maybe touch on with the NFL, like, oh. Is Lamar going to get the DAC treatment? Well, yes. Number one, yeah. He's absolutely going to be... The the Lamar discourse is he can't win the big one. He's now two and four, two and five, two and four. Four, yeah. yeah. He's got one less loss than DAC. <laughs> two and four in, in, in playoff games. And I course. think Harbaugh's like three and six. Oh, yeah? I mean, he has got to the... You big know, game? The championship game. Yeah. Um, but yes, but, but it, yeah, this is what it tires me out to see fans. Uh, oh, Embiid scores 70 on 41 shots and 23 free free throws against the second worst team in the league. And people say, wow, best offensive scorer ever. He's the next Wilt. Luca, 73 points on 33 shots, 16 free throws while missing his second best player. What happened to defense? 70 is the new 50. The NBA sucks today, which is – that's some of the discourse out there, but I I just think it's silly. Yeah, I mean, there was – always. <clears throat> it happened – there were two or three of them in a week, right? Like, Book scored 60, Cat scored 50 or 60, and, you know, I, I tweeted something about, like, how this is annoying <laughs> that you can have a guy who can score 73 points and – you're sweating out a close game at the end. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> and people are like, oh, yeah, well, other teams do this. I'm like, okay, well, I seriously think the Mavericks have a bottom five roster outside of their top two players. Like, if you took the top two players on every team in the league and then took the next eight, the Mavericks are clearly, clearly in the bottom. Yeah, and a lot of that is because of what you had to give up to give get that second player. Yeah, and a lot of it's what you had to give up to get the second player that didn't work out. Yeah, in KP, you know, I mean, that was a that's yeah. a massive expenditure of resources and money. So Brunson walking, I'm like, dude, for nothing. I'm not like hating on Luca. I'm appreciating it. I'm standing up in my living room the whole time, like excited. And people are like, "Why can't you just enjoy this?" I'm like, "Cause their team sucks. They're not a good team. Not a good team, folks." And uh, the Mike Leslie tweet says, Luca with a career-high 73 points on the fourth anniversary of Kobe's death. (laughs) The difference between Luca's point total and Kobe's iconic 81-point game. Eight. I'm going to kill myself. Not at halftime. Kobe's number 73 eight. minus 8, uh, 65. Do I have anything for 65? No. <laughs> 8 plus 73, 81. Didn't he score 81? Okay, Does tweet, anybody tweet go it, tweet off? It, tweet it. Does anybody go off the day he raped that girl? Interesting. Maybe somebody who's playing the Nuggets. I believe the uh, Canadian junior hockey team was once celebrating that. Okay, yeah. That's as that's as far as as much as I know about that story is there was like a junior hockey team and I think there's a sexual assault and yeah but w- weren't uh, there seven other people that died that day? Do we not care about them at all? Did they we score not, anyone? Well, we kind of oh. care about his daughter. Yeah, but the others we certainly don't care about that terrible pilot. I mean, gosh, he's the one no. that killed him. Yeah, yeah. wrecked a chopper into the mountain range. <laughs> yeah. The only other thing from that appearance was I was shocked that Luca is bigger than Charles Barkley. And yes, all the videos it looks like significantly. In all the videos I see, is Barkley's just manhandling everyone in the nineties, and Luca's bigger than he is. Well, he was the round mound of rebound. Like, yeah. he was <laughs> like a big guy, you know. So the guy that uh, I feel like I'm name dropping a lot today, but the guy that I grew up next to that played with OJ, yeah. They lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
That's where his son played basketball and football. And he, they knew Barkley. And he was like, dude, he's not a big – he's like 6'4". Six, 6'5". Four. Six, like, they hmm. trained with him all the time, and they were like, he's, he's no bigger than you are, like, height-wise. And in my mind, Barkley was like 6'10". Yeah, big. <laughs> like, growing I up – I would have thought like 6'8". Yeah. Man, I don't think so. Yeah, no. And, I mean, Luca towers over him, and he's much thicker – Throughout, like Lucas, he's listed at six six, but I remember hearing like, dude, he's six five. Like he's smaller than both of us. Like they worked out with him a lot. Yeah, Luca, um, first player ever to average a fifty point triple double over a two game span, which he did. <laughs> did you see Grant Williams' Instagram post? What's that? I think Grant oh. Williams had nine. Yeah, he was yeah. like 82 points together. <laughs> <laughs> was the picture of him holding a 73, is that Photoshopped? No, I think they had him do that. Okay. I don't want it to be Photoshopped. We've gotten a lot of good memes out of that. I think yeah. they had him do it. <laughs> yeah, me to my parents when I bring home a science test. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's pretty good. I think Followell pointed out he's a lot of things about it, but... You know, he raised his scoring average uh, an entire point in one night. In one night, <clears throat> so after thirty six or thirty eight games, that's a uh, like an impossible thing to do. Yeah, especially if you already average thirty three games. Yeah, um, you know, all his percentages uh, raised significantly, but it's a wild ride, man, because they're not really very good. Yeah, you actually got to see a pretty good Grant Williams. I don't know how, how much of the game you got to watch. Yeah, I, I watched a, eh, you know, half of the time I was there, I was watching the game. The Kings are better than they are. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a team you've fallen behind. Um, And, yeah, we're just going to be in play and watch with an all-NBA player, first teamer, for the rest of the year. Which is a unique experience, as I think I, t- I told you guys whenever we were in our former job. I went through 30 years. There have been two all-NBA players to miss the playoffs. And it was Steph Curry in his uh, sort of down-hurt year, and they were in the play-in. And it was Anthony Davis, who immediately demanded a trade. And watching him play, he needs like two weeks off. He definitely does. He's so banged up. He's always going to be banged up, though. He's always going to be banged up because he just runs into people. Yeah. It's not even a matter of, like, he needs to be in better condition. No. It's It's that the way he plays, he just runs into people. And he's never going to get an (laughs) all-star break off. No. He would have to turn it down. And he goes and plays in the international thing. Every opportunity he gets right. for country pride. This is just kind of the experience. Well, Luca's good. <laughs> yeah. And uh he is the reason to go see the the Mavericks. Um, that or somebody inviting you for free. Yes. Uh in a suite. Yeah. That's very yeah. Very key. Yeah. All right, let's do NFL in a minute. But first, the dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up. want to do an actual spot for live spots? Absolutely. Because we did say we're allowed to do live spots now. Yeah. We don't really have any. Uh, so it's an advertisement about advertising that you can contact us, right? Right. Bracket Dan and Hotmail, I suppose. Uh, but Blake? We're trying to, yeah. Contact info? Uh, you can email us the dumbzone at gmail.com. There you go. Right there, folks. Or Do we each one of us individually. One? Yeah. Okay, we're opening that one up. Probably yeah. should have planned this out a little better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought we liked it. Not not a lot of people have that. but no. Listen, I'll come to your place of business and shoot myself in the balls with a pellet gun. But uh, okay, well that's interesting. But uh, and many have ever many people have reached out already. Like when we first launched this, yeah, 
we will be contacting you, we or somebody, but we're trying to figure that out. We're still in this middle period. And speaking of people that uh, reached out, so a lot of people that we used to advertise with at a uh, radio station Mm -hmm. reached out to us when we first left that radio station. Um, Like called to say, hey, let us know when we can support you uh, or this or that. And I apologize now for not mentioning them all during this live spot about live spots. We will make flowers on you in the near future. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We, but Sing I wanted to. Keep it the wrath. With your consent. The message today is that we have two big advertisers that we're very close to that really went above and beyond to help us out. So those are the ones I'm just going to focus on today. So if, and I talked to others on the day we left, but these are the two I have to mention in no particular order because they both are awesome. Uh, Eatsy's and Prosper for Adam Ro- uh, Adam Romo at Eatsy's and Chaz Gilmore at Prosper Ford. He also runs Grapevine Ford, but he built Prosper Ford. That's where I purchased my vehicle. To Grapevine Ford? Uh, absolutely. That's where Shaq bought a vehicle for, for a, a family. family. That's right. <laughs> like yeah. when he was running through town. They were texting me pictures of Shaq. Uh, he was like the really big one. And you may think I got a great deal because I knew Dan. I got a great deal because I was at Grapevine Ford. That's right, folks. <laughs> uh, but you should mention that you uh, that you know us. That would help. That'll, yeah. that'll help us. Yeah. That would help. Uh, Shout Adam, out to Jay, too. Adam Romo is probably more publicly recognizable as his name. Um, not only he was on uh, you know one of our streams, our football streams this year, but... Um, he was also, his name can be found in our court documents. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> as he actually testified on our behalf in court. And the only reason Chaz was not in court was because we correctly thought that our case was strong enough without asking Chaz to be there, but he absolutely would have been there. I would say of everyone who appeared in court, uh, including everyone in the, uh, forthcoming lawyer, lawyer round table, um, our magistrate enjoyed Adam Romo's presence the most. Yeah, he was a uh, he was a big hit. Yeah, he's dynamic. Um, but they're both awesome. They've yeah. both really supported us uh, throughout this time, and then just in the past, and possibly in the future. But uh, we wanted to make flowers on them. You you kind of already went to the well on that one once. So yeah, yeah. No, no good. No good I mean, for two. We're learning. Right. Anyways, get a pellet. But I delivered it uh, like a stand-up comedian would, like as if I had never done it before. (laughs) Right. Right. And then, but I forgot. I was. Oh, I did it at the same crowd. I had to wait for the ten o'clock show. Move venues. Yeah. Um, No, um, both great dudes, and uh, we are open for business. Yeah. So. um, Yeah. If you uh, do see one of those guys, uh, give him a big hug for us, or maintain a uh, proper distance for us whichever one you think yeah they you know kind of read the room feel like yep where are you you know are you at a, a funeral with one of them don't you know go real nuts over it but just kind of whisper to them but the main thing is go buy a car at grapevine ford and uh prosper ford and uh, buy your food at eatsy's yes go then drive over to eatsy's yeah it's right there and then order maybe, a po- I'll bet you they got a Super Bowl menu up and flying pretty soon, if not already. We need to hit that up. We should hit them up for Super Bowl. Yeah. Adam, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> I could save the toll, the uh, the call, the call charges. Um, and now, do we want to mention here that uh, the, the as the advertising is brought in, our current model is morphing as well a little bit. Yeah, so <clears throat> like you're still you're a subscriber. You right. Most there. people listening, uh, you get four episodes a week, plus probably some bonus on a weekend. But uh, that's that that's not going to change. That absolutely will not change. Um, but as part of this shift in the model, we need to we need to be like free for a couple episodes a week. So you can still continue to listen the way you've been listening on the Patreon app. 
Um, but we are going to start putting two episodes a week up on Apple, Spotify, etc., all the places that you can find your podcast. Um, it kind of seems like a jerk thing to say, but we have been putting out like nine hours of content for six dollars and ninety cents a month. Most Patreon podcasts put out one hour for five dollars. Um, so. I really, really, really hope you don't unsubscribe <laughs> just based on the fact that two of these are going to be free a week, uh, but two of these are going to be free a week. So whether you listen on the Patreon app or whether you listen wherever you get your podcast, I think is what they say. But we'll have them on the Patreon app too. Absolutely. So yeah. if They're you just, like the app. One more will be unlocked. Yeah. If you um, like the app. It, then you can keep, you keep just, doing it that way. Your life won't change at all, but it, would, it wouldn't hurt if you just went to your if you like if you do Apple Podcasts and you just add Or Spotify. Us. Yeah, that 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 actually would help. Or like what's the one I got? Overcast. Yeah, Overcast. That's my one of choice. So if you'd like just added us on there and yeah. followed us there, that's it not would be gonna, helpful. Like it would help the advertisers would be like, Hey, cool. Look at these cool dudes. Look at the numbers. Yeah. Um That's so, the like and subscribe where people I know. Match that follow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess the main thing is just like, yeah, you're going to be able to listen to basically half of what you've been paying for for free. How long is this live spot? Too but I, I was really, going to ask if all of our live spots are going to be six minutes long. But or is really, this too long? No, no, no. We're explaining a business. All right, let's cut it. Oh, let's restart. Start the music over. Whatever, dude. We're done. <laughs> okay. Uh... You're listening to The Dumb Zone. The Dumb Zone. The Dumb Zone. The Dumb Zone. Don't pop me. Is that one acceptable? (laughs) Yeah, I like that one. (laughs) All right. Well, it is time for us to slide into some football talk. Thanks, Blake. I'm going to save some stuff for later in the week, like maybe tomorrow. Okay. But I will let you know that um, my cowboy note this week is Micah's mom has entered the discourse. Not just the brother? <sighs> Micah's mom is now on the scene. But like I said, I'm saving that. What a tease. <laughs> yeah. Don't go look for it, anyone. Mm-hmm. It's explosive. Um, but we take our attention to other teams. Other groups, teams? And can we use the Chiefs and 49ers and look at the Super Bowl logo color scheme and come up with a... Doesn't fit, right? I don't think it does. Damn. Sorry, Aaron. Or a... A... A asshole. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever Jimmy Kimmel called him, I was I was so sure that was real. And then did you see the uh, grocery store TikTok going around? Mark Go that, on. Beth. Uh, they already had like cookie cakes with the Ravens and Forty uh, ers logo on it. What on did it. they know? Yeah. What like at halftime they're making them, uh, or because of the like logo? they were already like out in distribution. Chiefs Forty ers no, Ravens. Ravens, because that was a conspiracy theory. That was the color, oh, okay. the color scheme. The color scheme. Okay, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. So I guess those are going to be shipped off overseas or something. Yeah, you got to. Oh, send, that's right. Halftime cakes to Somalia. <laughs> that only really makes sense. They, the halftime uh, issue was the Detroit game. Yeah. Which game do you want to start with? We we can go chronologically. Okay. Um, I thought the the weirdest thing about <laughs> what we saw from Baltimore yesterday was. I mean, every single person that you hear talk about the Ravens is just, they're a model organization. It doesn't matter if it's, the the GMs can change, the quarterback can change, the talent level around the quarterback can change. I thought that was like the most uncharacteristically Baltimore game I've ever seen. Like they lost their cool so many times. And we're, we're hearing from the sideline that, Zay Flowers lacerated his hand on the bench after fumbling. It just felt like they're always a cool, calm, collected team. 
and they got frustrated. Bunch of personal fouls, fumbles, strip sack, whatever. It was just weird to see them implode. Like, I expect that from Dallas. <laughs> like, Dallas just kind of does that. But it was weird to see that from Baltimore. And then from Patrick, I mean, I think he's the greatest football player who's ever touched the grass. And statistically, his numbers yesterday don't look like, you know, some of the other games he's had. But I don't know. I just feel like he's in control all the time. And all year we've been talking about, like, hey, do the Chiefs have it this year? Like, you know, speaking of supporting cast, like their supporting cast is terrible. Whatever was happening with Kadarius Toney over the weekend, which we can talk about in a minute if you want. Um, And he just – he's just that good. It's Brady Belichick, you know. Four Super Bowls in five, five years, years, and he's been starting for six? Yeah. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And the only reason he didn't get to the Super Bowl his first year is because Tom Brady beat him. Yeah. Like, it's and been, then Tom Brady beat him in the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl. That he lost. Yeah. With the Bucks. yeah. So, and, and I know people probably, again, get he- tired of hearing me talk about this. We continue name drop Monday, but... <laughs> The fact that I've been, like, in the room while the greatest football player of all time is working out, I feel like it's something I should not stop talking about. Like, and the stuff that I've seen him do, it's it's not just random. Like, they practice that stuff. Like, the off-platform stuff, the balance stuff. I've seen that guy go through a workouts that I've never seen another football player do in my life. He's not that athletic. Well, the he's the, not he's not going to test well. He's not that fast. He's not that quick. I thought one of the coolest plays was when he was sacked. Yeah, he got sacked or he was getting sacked, but somehow got rid of the ball with his left. No, he was sacked in the end of, on this. Oh, okay, play. that one. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. sack where his knees get bent down. Yeah, but he's falling down with his left hand. I think he braced himself. Then he spun, and I think yeah. somehow then he held on to the ball, and it looked he might escape. I mean, he was just getting swarmed, but then he still got sacked in the end. But it was like a, an amazing athletic yeah. play to stay alive as long as he did. And then the nine seconds in the pocket on the throw to Kelsey. Yeah. Like, he's Gumby. And I'm telling you, like, I've, I've watched this in person. That is not just like – that doesn't just happen. Obviously, some of it is genetics, but, like, the way that they work out, it's very different. This is a lame question, but could you feel, like, his energy? Like, that's Patrick Mahomes. Like, did he have an aura around him? Because there's some people you're around, it's like, oh, my God. it's And I got that around CD Lamb. I you don't know. know just... the, the weird thing about it is when I first started going there, he was, like, a junior. At Tech? Yeah. Okay. And so, like, nobody really cared. At all. Like, nobody knew who he... I mean, I did, but, like, the suburban moms I was working out with didn't really have any idea. And then, obviously, by about three or four years after that, yeah, maybe, a little bit. But it's weird, though, because he's so unassuming. I would tell you this. (laughs) Being uh, 10 feet away from Noah Sindergaard, way bigger deal. Yeah. Because he looks like a god. Right. Right. Like, he, he's huge, and he has, like, flowing blonde long hair, and he punishes weights. Patrick's just kind of there. Hmm. Standing on a balance beam. I love looking at that draft. Yeah. <laughs> I think there, Imagine there, there are some teams that don't love looking at that draft, but other teams? Yeah, I mean, so who did the Browns have at that time? This is 2017. Baker was after that, right? Baker was because this 20, is the Miles Garrett was yeah I number think Baker one overall was 2018. So the Browns are still on Manziel. No, no, they were journey manning it. Trubisky, yeah, that's the big one. That's the big one because many of us said at the time, like, "Whoa, what?" Trubisky. That was where they traded up to get him. <laughs> the Browns had uh, Deshaun Kaiser. 
who went 0-15. Mm. So really, Trubisky was the only quarterback taken ahead of him. Watson was around... Um, Deshaun Watson was 12. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Chiefs got him at 10. Did they move up? Yes. Yeah. So, which, which, if you recall, was controversial at the time because Alex Smith was extremely capable. Well, they, I, I'm pretty sure they were they were in the playoffs the year before, and that was a big deal. And and that's a story that uh, that my brothers told me before that the Saints really really wanted him. They wanted to move up, but like Drew found out about it, and was like, yeah. Drew. Breeze. Oh, Drew Brees. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It was like, absolutely not. So they didn't have that relationship that, obviously, Aaron Rodgers, when you take a quarterback in the first round. Yeah, and it's a little bit different if you trade up to 30 and you trade up to 10. Because the Saints, if you look, the Saints are picking 11th, and they took Marshawn Lattimore. And Patrick was taken at 10. But Brees is probably why the Packers didn't tell Rodgers. They were telling, or they were taking love. Yeah. Until like, the pick is in. That's when he had to pour himself some tequila, as he said. They must have just thought that was a bad quarterback draft overall. Just the people. Right. The if, Browns. No, just the if there's not general NFL. It, intelligence, yeah, if you're not yeah, pick yeah. one, two, three. Oh, okay. Yeah you're thinking it's a bad quarterback draft, and somehow Trubisky got two. I don't think anyone else picks Trubisky at two. No. Except somehow the Bears thought Give that was a farm. thing we needed yeah. to. And, and McCaff- McCaffrey's in that draft, so that's yeah, a rare some, time where you're going to see a running back at the top. There's some great players. That was the Taco Charlton year. Mm. And what really hurts there is that T.J. Watt was taken two picks later. And there was still a notion about Big 12 quarterbacks at that time. I mean, there still is. There still is, yeah. Yeah, and and for me, like, it was just that I'd seen almost his entire college career. Like, my wife went there, a bunch of my friends went there, and we I would watch him every week, and I'm like, this guy is carrying this team to six wins. With Did you think one- he'd be great? Yes. Okay. We have audio of that that we can't play. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I know we were all saying – Lamar Jackson, Cowboys should take a chance on him. For sure. He fell so far. For sure, but, dude, I mean, in college. But Cowboys weren't going to move up to 10 to get. No, no way. Someone, yeah. But in college, like, the, he was hurt the whole time because his team sucked. He had to score 60 points a game to stay competitive. He was playing on, you know, one leg and one shoulder the whole time, and he would still go out and get them competitive. And it was awesome. That Baker game. Dude, that is – I've said this before. That is my favorite football game of all time. I remember where I was. <clears throat> I remember everything about it. The Baker-Patrick game is unbelievable. I think it was like 83-72. to 72. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look it up. And From what I remember of the game, it's like OU would score in five plays because they were just that much better than Tech, and then Mahomes would just have to be Superman – They'd score on nine or ten. He'd grind his ass all the way down there. And that's when we <laughs> had the cha- uh, sixty-six fifty-nine. Dan, sorry, I overshot it a little bit. And that's when we you got had, excited. We had the uh, F you Baker. Like every time he came on the field, F you Baker. It was great. So much fun. So the Kadarius Tony thing was uh, apparently he had a a baby. Good for him. Friday night, Saturday night, and the Chiefs said he was out because of an injury, and uh, he went off on in- Instagram saying that they're lying about his injury. Can I read you the stat real quick? Yeah. That, that night, Patrick was 52 for 88. 88? <laughs> for 734 yards. <laughs> Jeez. 88 passes. Baker, 27 of 36. For five forty-five and seven touchdowns, and he can't get player of the game. Unbelievable. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a note. That just, I guess, more of. You know, there can be distractions 
but they either distract you or they don't. Yeah, I mean, and so it's 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 another. At the end, you might point back to it and say, "Oh my gosh, that really was a problem." But then, if you win, it's a eh, well, we just handle our things. Yeah, adversity. I mean, you could probably say the same thing about the Swifty thing, right? Yeah, for sure. Like I'm, in had my, they lost in it, my mind when Patrick Queen is like on Kelsey, I'm like, is he saying something about Taylor Swift? <laughs> Yeah, well, it be it, to me. That's hard to trash talk somebody because you're dating Taylor Swift. Yeah, but you know, we've heard from guys like oh, throughout the year that are like uh, that keep have mentioned ripping it. Me. Say again. Keep ripping me. Yeah. Yes, I'm. I'm nailing like the most popular uh, chick in the world. Nailing. I'm assuming they're nailing. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I've done anything that would qualify as nailing in a long time. Mm. But I'm not Travis Kelsey. Yeah. You're... Well, because you make love. <laughs> That's right. I was I was interested in what Blake was gonna finish up with there. I would imagine he's got a little more tea and approaches it differently than you do, but I don't know. You've never seen me. I, I haven't. <laughs> Not yet. What? Not yet. That's why we go to France. It's twenty k subs. Kelsey now has the record for postseason receptions. <laughs> he got it in twenty one games. Who did he pass? He passed Jerry Rice. <laughs> Who had it in 29 games. Just think, though. I know. If only they would have thrown that ball around. <laughs> but they didn't. They had many other options. I mean, how many catches did Tim Rathman have? So many. Um, all right, so Zay Flowers. Mm. The taunting was uh, exceptionally egregious, right? You have yeah, to. That's, a bad, that's a bad bit, man. you got to. As a guy who yelled a couple f bombs in a rec game yesterday, even I know. I mean, he kind of pushed him down. That you can't. They're going to call that spun every the ball time. at him, hovered over him. You know, yeah. flexing like that's just dumb. Well, yeah, I did. The, the defender was trying to hold him down. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying I don't think it was just taunting the catch. I think the guy had his ankle. So kind of second guy. Well, I think that's why he pushed him. Like, yeah, that's definitely why he pushed. him. Okay, but still, you're right. Still. You know, and some were saying that Kelsey keeps taunting. Well, there's difference between doing it at the person and then just kind of... You can't stand over him. Celebrating, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was just stupid. Then you might even think that where he got the fumble at the goal line... That's a Belichick no-no. Right. We've talked about that many times. You, you don't reach for the goal line. Not a, I, and I don't think he needed to. I don't think he did. That's a great point. I don't think he needed to either. I would say the only thing about reaching is do it at the pylon. Because then you could just touch the pylon. Yeah, but he was like six, seven yards inside the pylon. Yeah. And at that point, you're like, dude, there's too much traffic here. Yeah. You're not going to be able to get away with that. That was a bad bit. And then, yeah, the fact that he then went and cut his hand open on a bench. Lamar is pretty awesome when he threw the pass to himself and got 13 <laughs> yards. I don't I don't know that I've ever seen that work out like that before. The tip pass, yeah. he caught it, and then he actually gained a bunch of yards. Yeah, that was cool. And if not, they're right there in easy scoring position. Man, if nothing else from yesterday and before we go to the other game, like I just feel it for that guy. Lamar? Yeah, I really want him to get one. Not so just, when you look at his Savi, but for for Lamar. Take a look at his playoff losses. He's been bad. Uh, first one was against the Chargers in 2018. Was that Philip Rivers? 23 to 17, they lost. He had 194 yards passing, two touchdowns, one pick, and only 54 yards rushing. The next year, they lost 28 to 12 to Tennessee. 365 yards passing. 143 yards rushing. Damn. That might Somehow be the, they only scored 12. That might be the one where he was good. I mean, you you do wonder. Fourth downs. You know, I mean, Dak puts up big numbers in a game they were just getting drilled in. So, I, I don't know. But, uh, but you do look at the overall point total. 17, 12. The next uh, loss he had, they lost uh, at Buffalo. 
seventeen to three. That one I remember. So there he is. He's averaging ten points a game in the playoffs. One hundred sixty-two yards passing, thirty-four yards rushing. Uh, lost, and then lost yesterday. Yeah, that's the the fourth. They lost uh, last year, but that was he wasn't playing, if you recall. That pick at the end, man, and him slamming his helmet. Like, I just felt that as like, oh, dude. Definite pass interference, right? A hundred percent. Also, now, definite, you might you shouldn't not throw, throw three <laughs> into three defenders. Yeah. But, yeah, the, I mean, the receiver got, like, hip-checked. And then, of course, Horrible. Gene Steratore. I don't know why he's <laughs> on there just to say the NFL uh, officials are great. And that's a they good got that no, one right. That's a good no call. Like, yeah. why don't we just record that? <laughs> and we'll Play use it, like it a as drop. a drop. Yeah, what if we just pay you a one-time fee to say that and we don't have to drag you in here every every week? Um, you guys want to hear something funny? Um, Travis Kelsey makes about the same as Michael Gallup. Oh, man. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, just re- I just remember reading, like, before the season started, like, I think I was doing like a Dalton Schultz research project or something, and it's like, how is it possible that we're getting away with paying the best tight end in football, who ostensibly is the best receiver in football, like twelve or thirteen million dollars a year? But Michael Gallup makes the exact same thing, and so, so does like every other spare second or third wide receiver. Wow, so Travis Kelsey sh- should make twenty five a year. Yeah, so the tight end market hasn't caught up. Kittle and Not all those yet. guys. There has to be enough tight ends. I know that's a thing that are good. Yeah, like that good. There's like there's, four, there's like five, three yeah. or five. Yeah, Mark Andrews, Kittle, hmm. Kelsey. Um, I heard someone else mention this, so I wish I thought of it first, but haven't mentioned uh, this part of it. The thought that what if they win the Super Bowl? And Kelsey proposes to. <laughs> it's not crazy. To Taylor Swift on the field. No way. I feel like that's something that he wouldn't just spring on her. Well, I mean, I've already seen reports that are like they're getting engaged this off season. She was on the field last night. She was I talking know. to Romo. That was weird. That was super weird. <laughs> Um, the whole thing is weird. Okay, so... So she's going to be at every game now? Well, now we're looking at the schedule that she could... Fly back from Japan or something? Because, yeah, that was the the far away look for a month ago. They were like, oh, no, she's on a European tour. Not a European. She's South uh, American, yeah. They're the three seed. Um, South American... Yeah, wasn't she like in like Venezuela or something? No, I think it's like Japan. No, I'm saying before, like when she missed like three or four games. In no, a no, row. no, but they were looking and ahead to yeah, say, yeah, okay. okay, if they are in the Super Bowl, she won't be able to be there because her right. tour is in Japan. And yeah, now it's like, well, okay, but if she gets off the stage, hops a private flight right away, that's a 13-hour flight, it she'll get me. there in time it kill me. for the game. She's certainly going to be there. Yeah. Although, what kind of jet lag are you getting there? I guess she's still got to be there. She loves her private jets. The Do you uh, like that bit? No, well, I don't, I'm not familiar with this. Um, she is uh, not the favorite child of the climate activists. Yeah. She's like the most prolific private jet user in the world, which See, I I'm, know you respect. I'm really pro. Yeah, I'm really pro climate. But <laughs> if I had the uh, the means for a PJ. I might have to get one. Uh, you talk about Baltimore's mistakes, though. How do they have 12 men on the field to start the final drive? Really weird. As Kansas City starts their final drive. Really weird. They they look disorganized. They got away from the run. And then the uh, – so now it's first and five. And you're like, okay, we're just going to take an offside so this, the clock doesn't start, and it can be a first and ten. Let's do that. That guy just blew up a line, like just yeah. mashed him, and it was a fifteen-yard penalty Very instead. Very undisciplined, yeah. Like the just unnecessary roughness, and that that was idiotic. Even, yeah, the they had multiple on the day. I 
heard that they wanted to get a personal foul on purpose because you can decline in offsides. So rather than do this whole song and dance. Interesting. That is not worth 10 yards, though. Blow them up and get a first and 10. That is not worth. I don't know the validity of that. That's just what I read. That's interesting. Can you keep going off sides in perpetuity? Or is there some rule about you have to accept I've heard that mentioned before, but yeah. Belichick's done that before. I think. Like he just keeps doing it? Yeah. Well, the Jets. There's no way out of that? Oh, well, this was the delay of game. I, I think, think it was a delay of game, yeah. Belichick yeah. was trying to take a delay of game to get his punter more yardage. And they and the, kept declining the Jets, it? The Jets and Adam Gase kept declining it, so he kept doing it. And he ran like two minutes off the clock. You guys want to hear another flag football story? Sure. Yesterday at the end of the game, um, our conversion didn't matter. It was like 26-21. And it was like, well, if they score, they're going to win either way. I mean, it's 25-21 maybe. So we took a delay a game um, just to, like, kill the clock. And I was standing over. I had come out of the game at this point. I'm over with the ref. And one of the uh, guys on the other team's dad was there. Mm. And uh, one of their guys started yelling jokingly. Cool dude. He's like, can we assess that on the ensuing possession? Okay. <laughs> Which you can't. No, but... And the ref Funny was like, no, that's not how that works. And this guy's dad goes, actually, they can. And I go, uh, no, they definitely can't. And he goes, I played flag football for 30 years. <laughs> oh, okay. And I said, I've been playing for 20. Okay. And he said, geez, you're old as shit. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I was like, thanks, man. But you look good. But as far as like ensuing yeah, possession. Yeah, that's funny. What what can we decline and accept? But no, overall, I just thought it was a it was a weird day for Baltimore. I hate it for Lamar. And then Mahomes with that the final completion was just just, a, just ballsy. Yeah, yeah. Um, the best to do it. All right. Other Before game? we move on to the other game, though, other game. Did you hear Andy Reid at the? Uh, podium with Jim Nance. Here we go. That defense, man, they were dirty tough today. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas. Congratulations, Andy. Jim, I appreciate you. Thank you. Nobody better. Thank you, pal. I appreciate you. Oh, appreciate you, pal. Nobody better. Nobody better. Nobody better. Except for everyone else. So, obviously, they won the Lamar Hunt trophy, and I got to thinking, um, <laughs> what is the trophy that the NFC gives out? What is the trophy for the NFC? Jake versus Blake. I'm going to go. Lom- no. I see Lombardi's the big boy. Lombardi is not the answer. Yeah. It's got to be somebody that's well known. I'm going to guess that. Uh, don't you have the answer? Sure. I'm just trying to fill time here while you guys are I'm going to go with is it Mara is it Mara Mara related the Wellington Mara trophy final answer yes your guess I'm gonna go off the board and say that it doesn't have a name The George Hallis Trophy. Ah, God dang it. The George Hallis Trophy. That was so right there in front of us. Wellington Mara. I don't know. I mean, they've owned the team forever. Hey. They're in New York. That was a good guess. That was good prod value. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, Now, mm-hmm. the Dan Campbell Bowl. Damn, that was a layup, wasn't it? We it should've... was. Yeah. If I didn't. Dang. If I didn't want to hold the show up more, <laughs> I would have probably been able to scan through the entire. It's definitely not the David Tepper trophy. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. At uh, halftime, mm. you had to be like, whoa. They can do this. I thought of you. Plus 1425, man. 
What's that? Your odds when you oh, the Lions like to, to win, win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I'm down to Stefanski, oh. coach of the year. <laughs> that is not a place you want to be. <laughs> no, he he did a hell of a job. He, had he, five, did, he did five quarterbacks. He did. He did. Now you got the angry OC, Ken Dorsey. So, <clears throat> where do we start? Do we start with the meat, Dan Campbell? Being criticized? For the fourth downs? Yeah. For the yeah. aggressiveness? Yeah, probably. It's great when it works out. But, yeah. I mean, if if Reynolds catches it. That was, and, you know, it wasn't even a bad throw. Yeah, Reynolds had two bad catches. Or yeah. two bad drops. Fourth and three at the 30, though. Like, what are you going to do? Leading, but see, the question is, because in the first half, they did kick a field goal to go up three scores. Yeah. So you're up, was what, up by two. 14. Yeah. Let's let's kick this field goal. That's um, not characteristic of what Dan Campbell would usually do on a fourth and two or three. They led the NFL this year on going for it when uh, two or three yards to go. In fact, over the last two seasons, they had... They went for it 23 times, an NFL high, with two or three yards to go. They converted that 70% of the time. So this takes out the whole two-point conversion thing, 55% yeah. or whatever. They do it 70%. So now you're going on a – that's certainly a shorter, smaller sample size than the entire NFL, but – you are pretty confident that you can hit these plays. Yeah, and I so, think from, from 47, it's like not that different. Yeah, that's the second or the last one. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. But the first sure. one they gave up yeah, yeah. was at the 28. And the question is, hey, you had a chance to go up three scores again and you didn't. We thought that's how you were playing here. Uh, that's why you could say – the first instance of you not being Dan Campbell aggressive was logical because you went up three scores. So you could say that again. Uh, of course, if that catch is made, like you said, that's it's it was a great pass. Uh, if that catch is made, the drive continues, they win the game, then you are crediting Dan Campbell for his aggressive nature for getting them to the Super Bowl. Now, some are saying, it is Dan Campbell's over aggressive nature is the reason they didn't get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It's legitimately I mean, you can actually look and say it was execution. Of course. Because sometimes, you know, we'll make fun of Dion for throwing players under the bus or whatever hey, coaching staff didn't do anything wrong here. It kind of seems like that's actually the way it is. Yeah, I mean when you make those decisions though, you have to factor in the fact that execution is part of it you're also not expecting to immediately give up a touchdown and then have Jameer Gibbs fumble <laughs> and completely turn the game around but you do have to factor that in let me but, uh point out that fumble too and the drop pass because I did get predictably a lot of momentum I got a lot of momentum hey momentum see momentum it's real okay there are out of every 10 games where there is a big momentum thing, maybe a couple of them, maybe three, maybe four, it might even be five, <laughs> will go, oh, look, that team then did win. But just about an equal number, if not more, will they? that team that started to gain momentum they came up short. They didn't end up winning. So that's actually – we got a lot of email about this last week on the concept of the term that I was looking for, which is survivor bias. I think I can't remember we were talking about seatbelts or helmets or what, but it's that, yeah, I mean, all the people who it didn't work out for are dead. So, like, everyone's like, I didn't wear a seatbelt. I don't wear a helmet. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm like, well, yeah, but – so that's the thing is, like, momentum people are almost like hypochondriacs. Where they're like, the only time it sticks out to them is the time when it validates the way that they're presenting it. Yeah. Where in reality, it's like, you don't even think about the other, 
I would say it's way less than 5 out of 10. I would say it's about 1 out of 10 that it actually some sort of change of event. I will so but, the one momentum I, didn't make Gibbs run the wrong way to get the handoff and then have and, it in and, the and, wrong and, hand. Well, why momentum didn't, didn't make him loop, what, drop that pass. Why momentum didn't, didn't have the Ravens win with the big crowd behind them. Exactly. Why exactly? Why didn't the momentum carry Detroit to convert more fourth downs when they were up? Or even it, just they the have momentum. One. That well, first half. Yeah, they did. I thought yeah, but then San Francisco started getting the momentum, and I just knew it. I mean, I know it when I see it. <laughs> it's so stupid. I hate it. I hate it. You want to hear Campbell talk about it? Sure. Uh, obviously, first question <gasps> in the post game was, "Hey, you had two failed fourth downs," and he gives his thoughts. Yeah, I just felt really good about us converting and uh, getting our momentum, and <laughs> and not letting them play long ball. Um, you know, they were bleeding the clock out. That's what they do. Um, and I wanted to get the upper hand back, um, you know. And it's easy hindsight, and I get it, you know. Um, I get that. But I don't regret those decisions, and that's hard. You know, it's hard because, you know, they didn't. We didn't come through. It wasn't able to, to work out. But I just, I don't. I don't. And I understand the scrutiny I'll get. That's part of the gig, man. Um, but, you know, we just, just didn't work out. I love him so much, you know. Like, that's how I want to be talked to. It's like, hey, I get it. It didn't work out, but and that's on me. Like, I, you just don't hear Mc- – I don't want to say McCarthy. Like, it's not all about McCarthy. But you just don't hear most NFL coaches, frankly, speak in those ways of – and and to be honest with you, as like – you know, all of us played sports at some point or another. That's the type of person I want to play for. That's like, well, just go do it. I believe in you. I'm not going to run a foreign guy out here. And then when it when it doesn't work out, you you acknowledge that like, hey, I get it. Hindsight, that's the way you're going to analyze this. But I don't know. I, w- I would run through a... GD wall for that guy. <laughs> yeah, and I've heard a lot of people say that you know fourth down conversions is that's what's got him there. That's you're missing the point. And he he said it in that clip. He believed in his guys enough to go for it, and that's the point. Is because I heard that I heard that a lot, right? Oh, well, ride the horse that got you there. Go for it on fourth down. That's <laughs> Campbell just believes in you enough as a player to put his trust in you, and that's what got them there. Is this relationship? No, that's a good that's a good way to state it because to me that's that and I said this to our our friend Matt last week. I think that's the coolest part about the fact that it's Dan Campbell who's the one who's leading this rev, uh not nah, revolution but you know what I mean that he's like a big badass and he's like I'm gonna be the guy who goes full nerd because it's not nerdy it's just I believe that more football plays executed by football players will gain more yards. That's all it is. And he's not afraid to be... Because the reason that most people don't do this in the NFL is because they're they're worried about being bad unconventionally. You know, that's what was so unique to me about like Chip Kelly, is he was like, F it. I don't care. I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work out, I don't care. Most football coaches, most coaches in general, are they're scared. They're not just scared of being bad. They're scared of being bad unconventionally. Because that's a way more criticizable than just being bad. And Dan Campbell just doesn't seem to care. And yeah. I love that. Yeah, they change the way they do things or believe in things because they're afraid of getting fired. Exactly. Yeah. That's what most people do. Most people want to color in, in, in the lines, and if they go 8-8, eight and eight, <laughs> doing it the normal way, then eh, whatever. Just didn't work out. Well, because their boss is there. Of course. That's not convention. They, they're they not used to that. And of it's course. And risk aversion. And, yeah, well, you, you, you made the right choice even when they didn't. Right. Um, I did want to say the – so right before half, they kicked to go up three scores – and I think that's the point that everyone's pointing to is it was the same exact situation in the second half. 
But I will say that these, uh, again, like we talked about last week, these are not decisions made in a vacuum. If you, When you are kicking with 12 seconds left in the half, that removes the field position aspect of the whole game. Yeah. So if you go for it and don't get it, you get no points, and then San Francisco just runs out the clock and we reset things. Yeah. That's a popular reason why people do go for it on the goal line. That's a good point. So I don't think those two situations are comparable. Now, although it was from a little bit further back, but San Francisco's trying to crawl their way back in. Dan Campbell said, you know, we were trying to play against San Francisco there and keep the ball out of their hands, get some of our mojo back, and you play the field position game. I, I think those two situations were very different. Now, the other criticized uh, point is something that probably wouldn't matter in the end, but it was at the very end. I think it mattered. When they ran it on third and goal and had to use a timeout because you okay so the point there is you're down 10 you need a touchdown and a field goal you'd like to get the touchdown but you can also just kick that field goal and keep yourself more time you know so some some might even say boy once I get to the you know inside the 20 let's kick a field goal like now uh now if there's enough time you might do that like what three minutes or so? Maybe you'll do that and hope your defense can get a stop. Yeah, you know, which if is, you have your three yeah. timeouts, which is what they were around, I think. When the drive started, or when they got uh, inside, I think field they were range. approaching. They got the, the red... ball back with three minutes left. Okay, of course, if you do yeah. that and you miss the field goal, now you're really well, screwed. Your the game's over. Yeah. Uh, so you want to get the t- tougher one first, I guess. But uh, also, sometimes a hail mary is a better chance than an onside kick because nobody gets an onside kick anymore, it doesn't seem. I hate it. Just Which the, is why we want the 4th and 15 rule. they got to do something, man. Onside kicks are an exciting football play. Figure something out. Well, I how did know. they make it so we can't get them anymore because you have to have equal number on each side of the kicker? And What's the exact rule, Blake? Um, like you used to be able to load up one side. Yeah, yeah I think I, that's it. Yeah, I do remember that? But I think teams have just gotten better about how to field it. Yeah, because it used to just be everyone go for the ball. But he then, top, and he topped that thing nice too. Yeah, like but, it, I thought, like they might have a shot here. But now everyone does the smart thing and blocks, and yeah, you just you have just one block. guy receive. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just innovation. So, my question though is, all right, obviously. Going forward on fourth down is a Dan Campbell call. When you are running the ball inside, you know, the at the end of the game there, running it on third thing. down, is that the can do no wrong Ben Johnson, who's the offensive coordinator who's probably gonna go get the Washington job? <laughs> That's what everybody's saying. Like he's the brilliant genius behind Dan Campbell. Uh, really the reason Dan Campbell can do all these things because of the great Ben Johnson. Is he the one calling that play? Is that where Dan Campbell, is he being criticized for not being the CEO coach, saying, hey, whoa, whoa? And is there time to say, hey, whoa, whoa? No. In that, you know, you're there's calling not. a play. Is no. there a chance for him to pull that back? No, there's not. Okay. I mean, that... So that's not a Dan Campbell call, really? I don't think it is. I mean, there's... a scant amount of time to make those those sorts of play calls and and I don't think if you have like a real offensive coordinator which they do I don't think your head coach is overriding that calling something in what are you going to do you're going to call another timeout I mean at that point it's like he's calling in the play that's that's what it's going to be and look none of us have been on the sidelines of an NFL game or on headset but yeah, I'm curious. I know someone who has. And I'm pretty well, how sure. much did you pay for a tape of that? That'd be pretty sweet. A tape of a, all the headset chatter. In the uh, game I would pay six ninety. It's like an SAP thing where you just like hit it on your. I mean, I would pay untold amounts of money because you know when I first like uh, <coughs> got interested in this really was when my brother was in the XFL. Because they were like, this is something we can sell. And it was awesome. Like, listening to, like, Norm Chow. Yeah. Like, yell at Josh Johnson. Oh, okay. So, they yeah. actually did that. Oh, yeah. You could hear the play call. You could hear oh. the play call every time. It's really cool. 
and like my brothers in the booth, like with a headset on. Profanity and, and uh, they would dump. You know, they would. It was delayed. Okay. So they would dump out of that, but you could definitely racial. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely hear like frustration. Yeah, and anger. You know, it was great because that's all that is. It's a bunch of dudes who have two lips of Copenhagen, six Red Bulls or Diet Cokes. And uh, they're just screaming yeah. at each other. Their life four, is on the line. Four hours, like their life is on the line. Exactly. It's great. Real men, you know. What are your thoughts on Purdy? Um, I think he sucks, but he played a great game <laughs> in the fourth quarter. Anyways, I don't think he's any good. Like, who knew he could run? Yeah, I mean, I did he know picks an opportune he, he got, times. He definitely got out of the pocket nicely a couple times yesterday. Um, he got lucky on that. Could have been an interception. Went off the face mask. Very I lucky it. that I caught. Yeah. Um, but I don't like him, and I don't think he's very good. But that's mainly just because he's advanced uh, deeper into the playoffs than my quarterback. You don't like him as like, as a person. I don't like his vibe at all. I think he's a dork. Yeah, I thought that gif of him was funny. Him walking up to the game. Do you see what he's wearing? I didn't see that. <laughs> he's just just dressed like a he typical. Looked like he came out of Coles. Suburban dad. He yeah. looked like Kirk Cousins, and somebody put over him walking in. My dad when he shows up to the airport six hours early for a flight because <laughs> <laughs> he's got all of his bags. And... I'm probably just jealous. That's all it is. It's gonna be. An interesting contract situation with him. I know. Well, yeah. you got a couple years to worry about that. No, you don't. Uh, yeah, he was a rookie last year. I th- yeah, yeah but years. I mean, but typically for a late round pick, though. So you don't have your fifth. fifth oh, year. you don't have the fifth year, right? Oh. <laughs> He's the last no, pick. The- I'm not saying it's press. I'm just curious. Yeah, no, with, with a guy with his pedigree, and but everyone thinks he sucks. What's his number? Um, especially for someone who's made no money. Well, the thought is that he might have, you know, they might have made the Super Bowl had he not got hurt last year. He that got hurt during that Philly game, right? such a weird game. Yeah. You should go back and watch that sometime. Of course he's... Why? Just McCaffrey? to watch what it looks like when an NFL team doesn't have a quarterback. Oh, yeah. I saw the Broncos during COVID. And they had to play the... Uh, oh, yeah, when they ran that receiver out there. Yeah. They were just snapping the ball to C-Mac. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Saints, right? I think it was Broncos Saints, yeah. He's 4-1 and one if you count the one being the one he got, you know, hurt, hurt early yeah. in the game. Like, he had four four uh, pass attempts and he was out of the game. Um, so, you might say in full games he's 4-0 and oh in the playoffs. And then he's about to face Mahomes and you kind of can't lose if you're playing Mahomes these days. Yeah, if you could beat by Patrick Mahomes, you're just like, oh, well, that's just what happened. Um. So yeah, let's see his numbers from yesterday. <laughs> one touchdown, one interception. You know, like the MVP voting is done. Passing. Like you don't have to still pitch him. Forty-eight yards rushing. I was just looking at that, and I was looking at the 1981 NFC Championship game, the catch. Gosh, Joe, Mon- featuring Joe Montana, the hero at the end, of course. Dwight Clark. Uh. During that game, did he have 53 yards rush? No, he actually rushed for a long of two. He had negative five yards. And before the catch. <laughs> what is he doing? He had thrown for three interceptions in that game. Wow. But, and Purdy just taking no, care I'm of the sure ball. No, I'm sure that's that's fine, though. That's... Will you vote on him to win next year, too? Probably. Bet. Vote on him? Yeah. What did we, the AP just give Dan a... <laughs> oh, yeah, say vote. Sorry. Uh, anyway, just having some fun with Brock Purdy. And uh, I guess it's not... <sighs> Detroit would have been really cool. Yeah, it would have. Obviously. It would have been really cool. Baltimore, in a way, you're saying, well, what are you going to do? It's Mahomes. But also, in another way, you're saying... Like, if you think the Cowboys had everything laid out for them. Oh, yeah. One seed, home. Um, all the staff. I was listening to stuff leading up to this game. 
because I was trying to figure out if I'm going to gamble on it. And everything was overwhelmingly in the favor of the Ravens. For sure. They are, uh, I believe they have 11 wins this year against teams over 500. Yeah, it's the complete polar opposite of like Dallas. Right. Any stiff test they had, they passed with flying cut, like they just destroyed these teams. Whoever came in, and it was going to be home, and it's their first, you know, championship game for Lamar, and just all that. I mean, it was just laid out. That and uh, the storybook, uh, the storyline is there for him. You know, the no other team wanted him in the off season BS, which is kind of BS. But you know, the the contract problems they yeah, had, it was a collusion. They finally paid him. He's got an MVP season. Yeah, this is going to uh, be the perfect cap. Lamar is finally going to take the and instead, it is yes he is going to get the Dak treatment. The he can't win the big one and Dak, you will still be able to say well, Dak is not a two time MVP and he's never even gotten to the uh, championship game. So that's why if you are a Dak fan and you say Lamar isn't getting the same heat that Dak gets, well there you go. Because Dak's probably going to make more than Lamar in his next contract. You know, we brought it up last week with uh, Josh Allen, but it's just, it's just, it's it's Brady and Manning, and maybe even to some extent Ben Roethlisberger. Like you're great. If the cards fell differently, you'd probably be in the Super Bowl every three years. But you just ran into the baddest mf'er of all time. You just happen to be in the same conference or division as Patrick Mahomes. Whereas, again, if you put either one of those guys in the NFC, if you put Josh Allen in the NFC, or you put Lamar Jackson in the NFC, they would be playing a different sort of game. They would be routinely in the championship game or Super Bowl. But you just have a great coach, and in my opinion, the greatest football player ever in front of you. Man, Burrow, Mahomes, Jackson, Herbert, Allen. Allen. They're all in the same conference. Dude, you didn't even, I mean, you didn't even mention <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. Like, Trevor Lawrence would be, like, the third best quarterback in the NFC right now. Yeah. Especially with, like, a decent supporting cast. Whereas, like, Dak just kind of wakes up and is the second best quarterback or best quarterback in the NFC. Yeah, his only challenger was Wentz for a couple of years for yeah. best quarterback in the division. It hurts. You guys want to move on to non-sports? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to, I got some Dan Campbell for later in the week. Okay. So Let's do it tomorrow. Okay. Speaking of France. Were we? Earlier. I mean, we talked about it a lot on the show today. On the air? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, climate activist this weekend um, threw some soup on the Mona Lisa. <laughs> which as a fan of soup um that's kind of the part i'm more upset about eh, it sounds funny though it does sound funny <laughs> yeah and you're not trying to ruin the mona lisa certainly i mean it's, it's encased in glass yeah but <laughs> just throwing soup uh, uh, how do you get soup into there is it the louvre it is okay look at that yeah, his daughter's over there. Yeah, okay. she said she wanted to go to the Louvre. Have he you talked said, to her since that? yesterday? No. I just didn't know if she maybe I actually acquired tried, some soup. tried this morning, but I'll talk to her tomorrow morning. Why? Why was this done? Yeah, I mean, you know how Climate. this is. It's the same thing as like what? the those broads that were chaining themselves to the stanchions at NBA games. Well, I know, but they were at least fighting the Timberwolves guy. Because he had burned all those chickens. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 yeah, they were like animal activists. I really don't know. I read a you couple stories soup. about this, but <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like the Rangers where they let you take in a one-gallon bag. We need to do that. I still think we need to do that. Spaghetti, spaghetti, chili, chili, <laughs> whatever. You could do some vegan soup or something. Whatever it is that you eat over there. Bag of steak. Why shot at me? <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Enjoying everything. 
Let's do so, it this yeah. year. Yeah, we should. You wouldn't dare. Don't test me. One of the women was heard yelling, what is more important, art or healthy, sustainable food? Which does not feel like a binary option to me. This is confusing. It's just a grab attention. You have a shirt on that says, like, Dan's thinking about which is more important. Uh, you have a shirt on that says the name of your organization. You hope people go to the website, etc. I wonder how that works. If anybody, if they do see an uptick. And could we get some downloads if we threw soup on something? Uh, not if we did. But if we got a hot. Yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Because I checked out the, was it the French Open? Yeah. I checked out that website a couple times. Once that lady changed herself to the court. Yeah, she was much better looking than yeah. Glue Girl and Chain Lady. I mean, I offered to be shot in the you balls did. with a pellet gun some 40 minutes ago. I would not say I'm a hot. I'm just trying to think of the hot we could get. Yeah. We know. We, we could definitely find one. Anyways, I want to spend the, a decent amount of time here on this Vince McMahon story. Okay, good. Which I know doesn't really do anything to move the needle for you, Dan. Have you heard anything about this? Uh, I think I heard he resigned <laughs> as the leader and there's some kind of yeah. harassment, something. Okay. Sex something. <laughs> sex something, yeah. There is a woman who has, uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal, filed a lawsuit against uh, him and the company. And the details are um, shocking. Uh, I'll read you a little bit of an excerpt. When they met, McMahon allegedly made promises of a job at WWE and showered Grant with gifts during meetings that were supposed to be about the job. He greeted her in his underwear and repeatedly asked for hugs. <laughs> now, I've seen the hug thing, but I've never seen greeted in my underwear. Then the suit said he pressured her into sexual activities in return for employment and warned her to stay quiet about their interactions. Um, she alleged that McMahon and uh, another WWE executive locked her in an office at the uh, organization's headquarters and took turns sexually assaulting her while other staff were working. He forced, when is this? Uh, about Some three, time ago? Three years ago. Oh, three. Yeah. This is not like a antique rape. I was thinking <laughs> pre-Me Too as, and as then Dave, she... Dave Chappelle would say. Yeah, she got the, uh, you know, no, the gumption once she saw everybody else doing it. This is, that's, you got to think that's kind of ballsy to do it after the whole Me Too thing kind of exploded. Did he think, ah, oh, this is kind of, that's blown over? Dude, but imagine this, though. Like, Let's we, get back we, to the rape. We talk about, <laughs> we talk about, like, how teed up sports are. Football's probably, like, the highest, most teed up, and some of the crazy stuff that guys there think they can get away with. There's literally nothing more teed up than being the head of wrestling. Yeah. But he's like, isn't he like 70? Yeah. Like, don't you think your T is waning? Uh, It's definitely waning, but he's on a lot of steroids. The pellet. You don't even know what that means. Yeah, I kind of do. The suit also includes screenshots of explicit text messages that McMahon allegedly sent to Grant. A May 2020 message said, I'm the only one who owns you and controls who I want to fuck you. So it wasn't just that he was assaulting her. He was sort of like a... Pimping her out? Big pimp. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. So it's real enough that that he had to quit. Yeah. Yeah, he's He's not like I'm denying these allegations. Yeah, it doesn't the truth seem will like come it. out. No, it doesn't seem like it. He's like, "Oh, damn." Yeah, and it is crazy. Like I know you and I have talked about this, the fact that you like completely missed you dodged the bullet of wrestling. <laughs> I just don't understand how it's just soap operas. Some people that I really Used to respect, like you. <laughs> You're a jerk. I was a kid. Okay. 
Yeah. But it was it, it, at no point was I like, oh, this is real. It was more just like this is exciting, you know. And I, if you I tell me there's was like hot 15. girls in there, that's important. It was so sexed up. Yeah. It was so sexed up. And there's hot guys too. Hot guys too. Yeah. A lot of hot guys too. A little dusting of racism, right? Uh, at times a more of a salt bay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. More more than a dusting. The Morning News has an article this morning. You're not uh, going to read anything else from the lawsuit? What do you want to hear? You want to hear about the dildos? Yeah. What do you and, got, And Blake? the other thing. That he pooped on people's heads. That's significant. On their head? Yeah, that was part One of disturbing encounter in the lawsuit occurred in May 2020 when McMahon defecated on Miss Grant during a threesome and then commanded her to continue pleasuring his friend with feces in her hair and running down her back. Now, if I'm the friend, why is that? It's, I'm losing my. Yeah, you might be. The blood is not flowing there anymore. Like, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. it smells. I'm not. Maybe like, it's a stall tactic. Ah, he was. It yeah, was happening it's like too thinking quick. about baseball. So Vince did him a favor. I'm going to help you out here. Let yeah. me poop on her head. <laughs> God, dang it! Just of all the things <laughs> I'm thinking that you know the three Would of us could do if we ever got a lady. Yeah, that's. <laughs> the bottom of the list, as it were. Yeah, I don't think poop should be involved with sex. <laughs> and that's why guys? we do that. That right there. <laughs> no, I don't. No, uh, no. I and don't. how does this happen? Like, is. <sighs> and again, like, work out. Does she know it's Roy coming? Bro, that is not like a fun poop. Like, that guy's oh. eating ribeye every meal. It smells like and raw eggs. eggs. Yeah. That is not a fun poop. There is no fun poop. No. But that's a bad poop. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, You've heard of this before, though, right? Um, I mean, I've heard of the uh, the hot Carl, for sure. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> and, of course, the chili dog. Okay, bud. She settled down. Look that up. I'm good. Yeah. You guys already know what it is? Yeah. 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 All right. But... I don't think it exists. It does. It exists in a lawsuit filed against uh, the CEO of one of the largest sports entertainment companies in the world. See, that's he's got a private jet, right? There's no doubt. That's the thing. That's that's what leads to the pedophilia and the weird stuff. Is like just too much money. Yeah. Like if you have too much money, too much power, then you could just do anything, and you're just bored with. Missionary. All right, I could have. Well, forget missionary. I'm just saying now I can, I can have 10 models that will yep. do whatever I want. I'll poop on all of them. At the time. <laughs> but, yeah, now, though, after being with them enough times, you're like, gosh. Yeah. What if I threw in some poop? Let's just see if that would, you know. <laughs> or, uh, my gosh, she's, well, she's uh, 30 years younger than I know, but it's still legal, and that's bothering me. Yeah. You know, so let's let's make it. Let's What's give the next somebody barrier? a little, little younger even. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. That's why you just look there should the be most. a better. Uh, now I agree with Brunig that there should be better wealth distribution. Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> of this poop and pedophilia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would that would save us. There wouldn't be an Epstein Island. That's true. If there wasn't that much money, it would help. Yeah. And then the other note was just that he apparently. I mean, the guy's like obviously like a sex addict. Sex addict. And he would name toys based on whether they were, like, white or black, uh, based on, like, wrestlers who were white or black. So he'd have, like, you know, a Booker T <laughs> dildo and then, like, a... Uh, Is that person black? Triple H. In your mind, did you think there was a white wrestler named Booker T? No. <laughs> Just trying to help the audience. That's not as explosive as the poop, but, yeah, there's a lot going on here. I just thought Dan might want to know that part of the story. You're probably right. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to talk about it. Forget about Dan. The people. The people wanted to. I'm just disgusted. Yeah, yeah. By, That's who we do this for. I'm disgusted by talk of poop. I hate it. I don't like changing diapers. I do it, but I don't like it. I never minded that with my kid. 
Obviously, never tried it with a different kid. <laughs> not not the yeah, one you well, took to the museum. Not the one I'm babysitting <laughs> uh, tonight. I, but yeah, no. Um, I mean, I, I don't like hate it, but I don't. I I like people. I never like thought farts were funny. Yeah, I'm not on board with my own poop either. I don't want to be a part of it at all. No. However, uh, I was thinking about this actually the other day. I do eat fiber-based cereal. Though. That's right. And broccoli. Lots of broccoli. Nature's colon cleanser. My buddy once pointed out to me uh, that humans are the only species that looks at all of their f- their poop. I don't look at my poop. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. You should. Why? You definitely do. I don't. I, I'm, I'm flushing as it's coming out. You definitely do. It tells you a lot about your health. Like a dog? I will tomorrow, a but I don't. A dog just moves forward. I'm telling you, know? you, I don't. The dog does not turn around and look at it. Yeah, it tries to cover it up. Yeah, he's kicking grass and dust and dirt up on it. Okay, you guys are, well, maybe I'm the weird one. I'm telling you, but I am 99% telling you, of people. I multi flush. Yeah. I know yeah. you, I know you do because you once left it downstairs. <laughs> that is <laughs> 100% not true. And. I want to be clear that <laughs> she last blamed week, me, and I just took last it. week whenever like, yes, I honey, yeah. last I'll week flush. whenever I uh, good, good deuced friend. down there, I flushed four times, and there was nothing okay, even in there. Okay, a waste of water. I don't care. I can't deal with this. Well, I'm just saying I got blamed, and she'll never know that. Anyways, it was really we'll, you. we'll do the other story tomorrow. There's your news. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't tell so bum. Zone news, like and subscribe. Bum, 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 bum. All right, we'll end with this. And I'm sorry. Zone presents Today in History. For those that are used to or accustomed to us, like throwing out your birthday in the beginning of our show, sorry we saved it for now. But there's been a lot of stuff going on. All this poop and sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dolos. So, Jake will apologize for forwarding this to me over the weekend because this came in on Friday. Today is my 40th birthday. Um, this is uh, from Chase Bailey. Yeah, I felt bad about that, but we were at Wired Wills. It came in at like 1130. Yeah. We were already rocking and rolling. It's a new age. I don't even know what that means. The timing. The timing on what, when we're doing stuff. Mm. And being able to get the email. Anyway, Chase Bailey. He had a pretty NSFW email. He did. Love that guy. Uh, hi, Dan. Um, let's see. He says lots of nice stuff about the show. That's great. And now I'm trying to get... Anyway, he says then after that, I turned 21 today. And I want to share my birthday with my favorite show... And, oh, yeah, something about Hotmail, it's fast and groundbreaking. (laughs) More Blake reading Hood County News. Okay. And more (sighs) Space.com from Nathan Parker. You're in luck, Nathan. I got a story for you that's coming up this week. (sighs) It's been months since I've done anything from Space.com. I don't need to hear that. Why Why not make it all the months forever? Don't I pick and choose only the top quality stories from space.com? Because every that, day that there's news new to me. Sorry, Nathan. Happy birthday to you. Uh, today is my 43rd birthday. Tell Jake I'm sorry to hear about his grandfathers. I didn't know either of mine. <laughs> Yeah, see what you started. Yeah, I guess that's worse than both of them. <laughs> One died before I was born. The other was captured as a POW during the Korean War. Huh. Okay, nerd. Maybe you should have. After he was released, he went on to he went on Chinese state-run television denouncing the United States and was labeled by the U.S. government as a traitor to his country. He lived the rest of his life in China. Therefore, I never got to meet him. Okay, that's actually badass. I'm sorry about calling him a nerd. Love the show. More Blake. Thanks, man. A lot of support today. From Cody Michael. That's fantastic, and I would like to follow up on that story. Do you think it's real? That's 100% what I would have done. Like, or- if your number comes up after, you know, the honeymooners, and you have to go to Nam, 
I'm looking for the first way out of there and to be like America sucks. Yeah. This is not necessary at all. Did we see a documentary where they were doing that in North Korea? Like defectors? No, they weren't defectors. It was captured. Do you recall Sounds this? vaguely familiar, yeah. In the but last I, yeah. six months. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bruce is missing. Oh, no. Teresa's dog. Mm-hmm. Are we on Hood County News? Yeah, this is Hood County Breaking News. He dug out of the fence... That's a great name for a dog. Uh, Thursday, about 5.30. Mm. Uh, said it's uh, their little fur baby. So if you've seen little Bruce. Hope he's all right. It's a chilly weekend. Yeah. I will tell you guys this. I am constantly freaked out about the cat. I've just never had a cat. And I'm like, there'll be like a whole day where I just don't see it. What if that thing got out? Dude, I, I'm, that's the thing. <laughs> the other day I was like, it's chipped, but he's too small to have a collar on right now. And there'll be like a whole day where I don't see him. Chipped is cool. My dogs aren't chipped. Yeah, I think it's just like a... Is it like a... Can you... It's not GPS. You can't pull up Find Your Phone? I wish you could. That'd There's probably great. a way to do that. That's um, got to be the future. This is more just like it's registered or whatever. But like, it freaks me out. And my wife will be like, dude, it's a cat. You're not going to know where it is all the time. And then just like eight hours later... It'll just emerge from like a closet where, yeah, I, had, they do where find some, I had looked. They do find crazy places to sleep. It's really, really nerve wracking. Anyways. Is anyone missing a black cow? <laughs> in the Fall Creek area near Pecan Plantation in the Do- Dollar General. Someone's cow got out? How would you know if you were missing one? I would imagine if you own a cow, you own a bunch of cows. Probably so, yeah, right? Like, do you do a head count every morning? <laughs> would you put, yeah, there's a cow but down by the Dollar General. Do you brand it with the Dumb Zone logo? <gasps> Let us brand your cow. How cool would that be? That would be amazing. Is that animal cruelty to brand an animal? They do it anyways. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Again, can, I offered to get shot in the balls. Maybe we can get that done this week. Got a lot going on, dude. So it's Monday, January 29th when oh, we're, we're recording live to tape. On this day in 1989. Have you not already said that part? No. Oh. I just started reading some uh, birthdays. Okay. Uh, on this day in 1989, Chris Dudley of the Cavs set the record for most free throws missed in one trip to the foul line. He missed five consecutive free throws. He was uh, I just remember when I was young being a Cavs fan. I remember Chris Dudley couldn't make free throws. How did this occur? Fouled on a three with a technical and then it said the Washington Bullets committed three lane violations. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and the he kept dorkiest missing. penalty in all of sports. <laughs> on this day in 2007 Kentucky Derby winner Barbara was euthanized. Mm. Two days after the latest surgical procedure was unable to help the Colt fully recover from injuries suffered during the Preakness States stakes the uh, previous year. And a uh, famous wedding on this date. In 1984, Linda Carter, who is known as Wonder Woman on the TV show, Married Robert Altman. She was 33. He was 58. Damn. Which she didn't need to do. No. She's Linda Carter. She's possibly the most perfect woman I've ever seen. I would agree with that. Yeah. Did that marriage work out? I would. 25 year age difference. I have my doubts, yeah. The answer is yes. They were married until he died in 2021. Wow. How about that? Good for them. I guess that's the positive. If you want your spouse to die before you, which I think we all do. Very uh, much older. Yeah, marry somebody a lot older than you. Yeah. That's uh, a 30-year marriage, though. Yeah, way to go, Robert Altman. Yeah, must have been a good dude. Today's birthday's not uh, subbies. Well, who knows? Maxi Kleber is 32. 
I wish he were better. I wish he was available. <laughs> How about that? David LaFleur is 50, former Cowboy. Wow. Jose Abreu is 37. Is that 50% of the offense? <clears throat> uh, was the it? Astros. Was it David LaFleur? No, it was Mike uh, Lucky. Mike Lucky. Yeah, you're David right. LaFleur was the tight end that was Troy first... Aikman said want draft, wanted to draft yeah. in the first round. Jose Abreu is 37? Yeah. See, people bring up it's old. R.I.P. Gavin Escobar for Romo, but nobody brings up David LaFleur for Troy. I think Abreu didn't they like defect. Different. That's why he got over here when he was old. Maybe. That also means uh, that age might not be correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Olympic gold medal diver Greg Luganis is 64. What a day for Dan. What a day for Dan. You know his fun uh, nickname, Blake? Greg Lusanus. That's right. That's right. Because uh, people would... Because <laughs> he's gay. Put their Got peepees it. in his beel. Yep. yep, yep. Romo also wanted Justin Hunter in that draft. <laughs> he's not a scout. No. Oprah is 70. After retiring from diving, Luganis uh, began to compete in dog agility competitions. Dog? He has said that being around the dogs gave him a sense of security, company, and unconditional love. So, like, he wasn't personally, like, racing other dogs, but he became a dog trainer. Heather Graham is 54. Oh, my God. Roller girl. Swingers, Roller Girl, oh, and then Lord. one of the Austin Powers movies. And then that's kind of like it, right? Oh, no, uh, Hangover. Yeah, she's older than I thought. <laughs> great point, Blake. <laughs> I just thought I did. She looks great. I would have thought 40s. Rachel Yucatel is 49. Hey, uh, it's me, Tiger. <laughs> it's Yucatel. You should tell. Riff Raff is 42. Oh, my God. A hero of mine. Real name? <sighs> Get the music. <laughs> I know this. Deep somewhere in the recesses of my brain, I know this. But I don't want to stop us down. I can't remember it. Oh. It's, uh... Horst... Simcoe. I knew the Simcoe part. Damn it. Lisa Emery is 72. Who's that? Darlene Snell in Ozark. Show sucks. Uh, show doesn't suck. It's good for a little bit. I do have some problems with it, but the most disturbing part of Ozark was Darlene, a uh, 70-year-old, was sleeping with, uh, like, I can't remember his name. Was it Wyatt? Who was, like, 25. Why is that disturbing? It just didn't look good hmm. to me. But maybe, uh, Thanks you know. your judgment. That's well, your thing. That's that guy's leather. And <laughs> Everybody everybody's needs a got leather. one. Actor Terry Kinney is 70. That is Tim McManus on Oz. Um, and then died on this day. Or excuse me. Yeah, died on this day. We have uh, Tom. Oh, that guy was great. Yeah. I think that show was actually like super, super ahead of its time. Yes. I know that you and Bob used to fight about that because Bob hated it because they did a musical episode. <laughs> well, no. And the, I didn't love that either, but. The big fight was about, and uh, he probably has a point, that I would stick with something too long. Yeah. So a show gets to sucking sometimes, like and then I, I have to ride it out like, man, I've watched them all. I got to keep watching it. Yeah, I don't do that. And like the final season did have a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, maybe Dexter might be a similar Same, thing. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. And um, Walking Dead, I hear people oh say that God. about that show all the time. But yeah. the first two seasons of Oz, though, no, it's in one of fire. those Seppenwall books, as far as uh, like revolutionary. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the revolution was televised. There I believe go. it is, yeah. and it's just about you know the early HBO days. And uh, The Sopranos obviously is thought of as one of the great shows, but he's saying that Oz belongs in there, and I'm going to concur. Oz. Um, what's our uh, our cop show? Well, I mean, I, I would say remember. The Shield the for shield. sure, but Best I would one. even say The Corner. Like, I went back and watched that at your behest. Yeah, at the one Corner, 
the David Just Simon. a miniseries, though. Yeah, yeah, but still. So died on this day, we have Tom Brookshire, who was Pat Summerall's play-by-play partner. And uh, before, you know. The guy who Madden. poops in the... And uh, Barbara, who died on this day at the age of three. And that was today poops on in history. And Vince McMahon poops on heads. <laughs> Adios, mofo. When I get tired of listening to the jibber jabber shows, permeating, infiltrating everything, sometimes you need something gold. Uncle Art Mail, then Jacob and Blake, who could ask for more? Fire up the party, light up the split, it's time for the dumb sun. The day is. History, the cowboys suck. Can spin Zahana. Came and sings in the dragon's den with Kit and Bodie, too. Did the said Hitler Blake made a drop? You were males cool Chap used to do the pitch but now he don't Six nine a month on Patreon Order a pizza, kick up the shoes Who could ask for more? Fire up the party, light up the split It's time for the dumb zone 